Here we are! Hello, one and all, and welcome back to Seeking the Hidden Realms here on the Hidden Realms channel. I will be your GM for the evening, Joshua McGregor, and I'm joined by this group of wonderful people. Say hello, wonderful people! Hello, hello wonderful people! It's true! Uh, I, my pronouns are he, him, and I'm the GM, and going around, we've got Daisy! Hello, I'm Daisy, uh, she, her, paving, uh, paving? Playing Raven, playing. she her. <laughs> Raven, all's your plaything. Nice. Mm. Oh, that sounds a bit dodgy. Ignore me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got Gary. Oh yes, that sounded like Gary. <laughs> that's that's, oh, that's Gary. <laughs> it's my it's my it's my drag name. Um, hi, I'm Carrie. My pronouns are they them, and I'm playing Pyo Pyo Jim the Swift, who's Welsh, and his pronouns are he they. Wonderful, and we have Alberta. Hello, my name's Alberta. I'm playing Susie Coin, and both of us use she her pronouns. Wonderful, <laughs> guys. Last time we left off, you guys. Uh, dreamt uh, slash met with the goddess of luck Avandra who told you of uh, the world Cygalia and postulated that John might be on the world of Volpicar which was once part of the Ismeran Empire uh, not sure exactly where but worth following up on and there was a resonance that John is looking for Pure Gorg, much as Pure Gorg is looking for him um you guys then went to the city of Wild Folk's Folly and saw that things were not well there. Uh, constant attacks are coming from the Silt Mother, uh, who's postulated to be mourning the death of the Clay Father, and she is intent on wiping technology from the face of Ipia, the residents of the city, fearing for the lives of themselves and their families are doubling down on the technology that is saving them. And I was starting to write in the city looking to burn all plant life from within. You guys defended the city from some uh, 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 animated plants sent by the Silt Mother. Uh, went in after a brief kerfuffle about uh, Pure York's surname because... Uh, they share a surname, Erswef, with the Dread Bakers, who once uh, served as the generals of the Clay Father and have now returned to Ipia to serve as the same for the Silt Mother. Uh, but they let you in, and you spoke to Isabel Spruce, who said, Yes, things are very bad. There have been riots. Uh, they have lost contact with the Watchtower. They need the attacks from the Silt Mother to stop, and they begged your help and uh that is where we are now you guys are in sort of this uh conference chamber within the constabulary uh the micon newell briefly appeared at the at end of last session uh and spoke to you all suggesting that you go to the watchtower first um and uh seems now to simply be turning away uh, to leave. What would you all like to do? Quick, was there any- Oh! Oh no. Newell said that that was all they felt like helping us with, right? Uh, unless you have anything else to speak to them about, they that was all that they wanted to uh, say to you. No. Do I want to Turns back this? to you. Um, no. No. What can you tell me about the death of the Clay Father? The death of the Clay Father. We can tell you much, but you ask for this information freely? This is not the way of the great spirit of the earth. If you wish to experience the history of the empty barrow, this can be arranged. What will you offer in return? I can't offer a bake good, can I? As kind as that may be, that is of no interest to us. Oh, dang. 
And you know what I can offer. You have been good. Your tributes have been worthy. What you propose may take time, which you and your party do not have. Perhaps ask the question you seek again when your services are not required elsewhere. Of course, thank you. Icon nods. Uh, anything from you guys? I think Pjorkjorg um, thinks for a second of like, do I want to read his mind? But also thinks, mm, I only have enough mental energy to do that two more times today. <laughs> Let's save it for a more, oh, is it? Oh. Totally up to you. That cut. No, I won't do it. Cool. Um, roll me just a. Uh, oh, you can roll an insight or something. Just yeah, give me an insight check if you'd be so kind. You've already decided not to, but just just for the fun of it. I mean, it was very crap. Um, thirteen. Uh, on a 13, you you decide against um, reading the mind of this uh, being. And some part of you is like, yeah, that's probably a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yes, and uh, this telepathic Mykonid, unless Ravenall wants to say anything, uh, leaves the room. You guys uh, have a bit of privacy here uh, for the moment as you sort of figure out what you're going to do next. Um, well, I don't really want to think about the bakers because I don't want to have another identity crisis. So what is everyone thinking? I mean, I'd like to head to the Watchtower, check that out, see what we can help in there. There's also, you know, the riots going on here in Wild Folk's Folly. Mm. But those are things I want to do. I don't know if the rest of you want to get involved in this. Watchtower does seem to be the next port of call. What about you, Ravenall? Yeah, I'd like to go there. Just take a, take a step back into the area. It'd be nice to see the place again. All right. Watchtower it is. Uh, fantastic. Uh, where are you guys going now? What are you... Are you going to chat to anybody from the Wild Guard before you go? Are you going to head out of the city? Or what are you, what's your plan? Should we check in with, uh... She whose name I've forgotten. Isabella? Isabella? Yes, Isabella Spruce, I remembered. Um... Isabella. Um. Isabel, yes. Isabel, thank you all. Isabel Spruce. My step niece is called Isabella. <laughs> 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 um, we can if you want. Just to let her know we're heading out and ask if she has any particular advice or healing potions she could land us. Mm. Okay. All right. Uh, you guys head out of this conference room. Uh, Isabel's pretty stationary. Uh, she's got her tree, which is sort of in the center of this uh, constabulary. Um, if you guys would like to have a, a, a an approximate visual, I will call it, of what this is, I'm putting an owl bear link <gasps> in the Lovely. chat. Owlbear. 
Indeed. Oh, I love the floor pattern. Isn't that nice? Mm. Uh, Isabel greets you. Hello. Have you given what I've said any thought? Yeah, we're thinking of heading out to the watchtower. Thank you. Are you all right here with the riots going on? We... It's not a tenable situation for long. We have been man managing to hold out until now. We should be all right. The, the thing I was going to ask if you would go to the Watchtower as the thing that will calm everything down the fastest will be stopping the Silt Mother's attacks. All right. Are you? She says, looking at the tree gonna be all right there are plenty of wild card here and nothing is guaranteed but we are the military force of the city so with luck and uh adequate forethought i should be all right all thank right. you any uh tips tricks Hints, questions, comments, concerns, healing potions for the way. <laughs> um, yes, we we should be able to get a couple of healing potions for you guys for the road. We're a little bit short of supply at the moment. Of course. Uh, Just one or two would make a big difference. Indeed. Um, I will grab those for you. The person that you are looking for... Uh, at the watchtower. It, the wild guard captain there is Worf. Worf Widecast. Um, who is a hobgoblin. Fabulous, thank you. Absolutely. Uh, the way we usually get there, the woods have always been treacherous. It's Ipia. People have whatever relationship they have and with the great spirit of the earth and protect themselves as best they can to make their way there. Our method was we had a teleportation circle uh, from which we could get to the city, to the watchtower and back without traversing uh, the lands. That circle has been broken in the watchtower, so we don't know what the situation is. Alrighty. And, uh, yes, uh, potions of healing. And she goes to have a quick look at the 5e potions of healing uh, and <laughs> what they are. Uh. Regular, greater, superior, supreme, I uh, think. I will roll for you. Let's get a good old d20 out here. And I've been charging these green dice, so this will be in your favor this time on hopes. Eh, totally average. Um, well, a little bit over average, so we'll call that. That and uh, D4. Cut. Oh, God. Um, okay. She... How did you get a cocked D4? It was off my... Uh, well... <laughs> it's difficult, but I managed it. <laughs> um... Yeah, two potions of healing and two potions of greater healing come your way. Beautiful. Thank you. Nice. Very nice. I'm dropping dice everywhere. I'm a mess. Alrighty, so I'm uh, noting down the potions. Yep. You guys divide that however you like. Well, that puts that us was in. very. <laughs> I was leaning over to grab the dice, and I was really close to the bike, so I was like, "I gotta this go." This is what it felt like. How does it feel for for this to be? Hey, everybody, right this is you want to do some ASMR? <laughs> no, I, can, I will ASMR your fucking ears off. <laughs> I'll out ASMR you any day. It's funny, I can't hear <laughs> what Josh is doing, <laughs> other than just what I'm hearing from outside. <laughs> Apologies, Daisy, but that, that happened. And everyone at home, also. <laughs> I can't do that. I literally have to put the mic in my mouth, and that's just unpleasant. 
So I <sighs> couldn't <Clark>. get involved. <laughs> <laughs> you take them off, just put the thing. I can't wait uh, to watch this later and see how aggressive all of this is. <laughs> <in my ears. laughs> it's anyway. going to be something. Uh, fantastic. Okay. So you've got those uh, potions. Yeah. Yes, thank you for this. Anything we can do. I mean, I can't speak for my crew, but we've all agreed together for, at least for now, gonna help out. Good. Uh, absolutely. What do you guys want to do? What do you guys want to do next? Are there any, uh... I'm, I'm just gonna give Isabel my wrist pad. Yeah. Give her my digit. Uh, fantastic. So, yes, you can communicate within a certain uh, range with that. Uh, and yes, Carrie. I would like to... Uh, sorry, Isabel, do you have a library? A library? Um... Yes, we have a sort of a small library associated with uh, the each of the universities in the city. Do you know if you'd have the ancestry of the Swefts? What an excellent question! Uh, absolutely, you. I wouldn't be the one to know, um, just because that's sort of a little bit outside of our purview. But, yes, there are two universities uh, here that you can uh, check and ask about. There's uh, U of T, so the University of Tistuea, <laughs> which is a reference to University of Toronto, which is why Albert is laughing. <laughs> um, and uh, and Aaronstadt University. How do you spell that? Uh, How do you spell that? Sorry. <laughs> I will put it in the Facebook chat. What's this new what? social network, Isabella? <laughs> uh, here, let me send it to your wrist pad. <laughs> oh, you've got it in Gatchen. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Uh, Bullywug. <laughs> fantastic. Well, which one is nearest to us? I've got that on my wrist pad. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're in the constabulary. Literally next door is Aaronstadt University. <laughs> Well, um, folks, I know we want to go to the Watchtower, but I'd like to, I'd like to see if they do have something about my family first. Of course. Do you want to do that yourself, or do you want to help? Uh, I don't mind really. I'm not, I'm happy to help. Thank you. Fantastic. Any minds made like work. <laughs> I did completely the wrong consonants at the end of the words, but that's completely fine. <laughs> um, Pure Kyok would suck a cab down. <laughs> one sec. Uh, yes, so you guys uh, head to Aaronstadt University. It's... it's it's a minute walk away. Um, and you go, there's a, a very friendly receptionist who is more than happy to... A uh, little a goblin uh, receptionist, uh, sort of middle-aged with big round glasses. Uh, it's very happy to send you the direction of the library, which is, of course, open to the public. Uh, but for reference only, students are the ones who are allowed to remove documents, and there's a librarian there who's more than happy to help you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Ta-ta! And uh, you uh, go to the library in Aronstadt University. It's a small university library. Most of the uh, papers here are on science and... Uh, the politics of the Ignaculus Galaxy, um, there is a small history section, uh, however, 
Um, I'm going to need an investigation check to find what you're looking for. And anybody who's here is welcome to either roll that as well or to give the help action. Whatever you prefer. Um, uh, um, I'll give you the help action. Oh, yes, please. <laughs> also, everyone remember that we have luck points. You have luck points. That's not necessarily was... specifically for this, but um, I just... Oh, I money. don't need it! Woo! Oh. I rolled a 16 plus 2. That is an 18. Nice. Incredible. Because thank you, thank you, thank you, Susie, for the advantage. You really <laughs> helped me welcome. point out that last book on the shelf. Uh, anytime. I know the uh, index card system is a little antiquated con considering uh, the uh, modern technology we have these days, yes, but the, I had the, experience with it the, from back in the day. The local Ursula library is very restricted. We don't really need index cards, so this <laughs> really confused me. <laughs> Happy to help. Thank you. Uh, you pull... Uh, based, there's, there are a couple of times of, like, sort of the history of Testoya, which is the continent of Ipia that you're on. Um, it's... To be entirely honest, it's more folklore than it is history. Uh, it, that seems to be the way that a lot of historical texts treat it uh, before a certain point. Uh, as so basically, when Ipia became part of the Anaran Assembly, that is when history records started looking like history records. Um, basically, when F Wild Folks Folly was founded. Uh, but before then, because you're looking at quite a bit before then, uh, at when the Clay Father reigned, which was um, sort of in the late 33rd century of the Ismeran Empire, so sort of maybe 1400 years ago. 33rd? Yes, so... 3-3. 3-3-0-0. Well, sorry. In the late 33rd century would be the late 3,200s yes, of the Esmeralda Empire. Um, so that's sort of like... And and that number is sort of an estimate given in the margins mm -hmm. by some student who's been trying to figure out uh, the, the exact timing of this history. Um, the... Clayfather is mentioned here as a, the archway whose territory this was. Um... And uh, his propensity for, uh, yes, being a sort of a harbinger of refugees, a provider of temporary uh, refuge and respite, uh, seemed like a, like a pretty chill guy, honestly. Um, there's some stuff here about, like, different archway are tied to different parts of nature. Um, the Clay Father seemed... It seemed to be of the earth and of water, as uh, seemed to be more of his kind of thing. And there is a brief mention uh, of a Cagrian line of people who lived here, just basically a family, uh, the Ersweffs, who, uh, and it says here, served as the champions of the Clay Father during the Battle of the Empty Barrow. As And again, in the margins, written by some student, uh, you uh, read uh, Last Ursweth Champion Theodore Ursweth? Question mark? Okay. And that's what you get from that. It's a really good starting point. Yeah. Thank you for helping me come here. Well, find it. No problem. Ravenel, do you have anything you want to look at? Uh, is there any, like, texts to do with Hellebore specifically? Give me an investigation roll, you'd be so kind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when help do I get a 
advantage. Do I just roll it again? Sure. We'd help you get you. Yes, you get advantage. That's right. Okay, thank you. And that is a twenty-one. Nice. Very nice. Hellebore, because, there's because, more stuff on. <laughs> because Pyokyok is so tall, he's able to like find and reach the ones on the top shelves. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, I just need to pull up a document. Um, a document. A document. Document. Yes. The Ipia world map. Fantastic. Um, so you are looking up the, uh, you look up Hellebore. Because Hellebore is a current Archfey, uh, there's a lot more research that's been done about him. There's a lot more that's sort of been solidified. And specifically because he's tied into the landmarks of Wild Folk's Folly. So... Basically, what happened was, uh, during the Esmeran Empire, but in this later time, uh, so this would have been like 800 years ago, uh, the Esmeran god uh, Eranor created the Edifetra Titans. You've heard of these before. Um, the Edifetra Kron, who created the Warforged of Giard that you guys met before. Um, as well as the Edifitra Brina that you have been sent to look for uh, by Kron. Susie, you have all kinds of knowledge of these guys. Uh, but the Edifitra who was sent to Ipia was one called Juthra. And. How's that spelled? Uh, J U T H R A. Thank you. Not at all. Uh, Juthra was sent to the. The planet and started to uh do some real bad stuff uh capture wildlife do cybernetics experimentation cloning procedures uh trying to replicate fey magic using technology bad stuff uh and the archfey were none too happy especially Hellebore. Hellebore is uh, obviously this like tall satyr archfey, and he led a rebellion against Juthra during the God War, which ended the Esmeran Empire. Uh, there is actually a statue of him killing Juthra in the main town square in this city. Um, but Tostuea, this continent, is not his territory, uh, and he did not claim it after Juthra's defeat, though it would have been his right. Um, his territory lies in the north, uh, in a region called Rasgar. R-A-S-G-A-R. Hellebore has been described as uh, an aggressive anarchist, essentially. Um, does not like uh, government as such. And it's it's almost like he awoke in response to that these sort of like encroaching influences from off-world. Um but was very much, very much anti, uh, anti Esmerans, did not like that sort of like god tyranny, uh, for, uh, his own reasons. And, uh, he's, but he's got, yeah, but he's got his own, he's got his own territory, he's got his own stuff going on, um, and it, Anything? Are you? What are you looking for? Uh, more than that about Hellebore, if anything. Well, what Raven remembers was he was there with Arcadia. Yes, he was. So, 
can I try and recall what they were talking about to see if there's anything specifically mentioned because I may not have had it in my notes. Uh, yes, go ahead and roll a history check. Oh, God. <laughs> Fifteen? Fifteen. Let me just see if I wrote anything down. I can bring my notes. <laughs> he seemed to be talking to her. Uh, because the Moonlight Carnival is sort of uh, originates on APM, but also travels to other worlds, right? Um, mm -hmm. He seemed to be negotiating with her, getting a message off world. And, uh, which lines up with what you know about, like, him trying to get in contact with the Benvolio and, uh, and getting that message to Tilly. <laughs> mm. Uh, yes, he seemed, yeah, he seemed to want to, uh, want to talk to people off world, which none of these history books seem to suggest is in line or something that he's wanted before. And it's worth noting that you were on Tostwea when you when the carnival was uh, sort of chaos thrown to pieces. So he would have been quote unquote trespassing in another archface territory to have that conversation. Which, uh, which you as a resident of uh, as somebody who would be familiar with it, I will tell you, is a very dangerous play. The archfey. It's not that they don't meddle with one another's affairs and don't go under the radar and trick one another and all that stuff. It's just a very big deal when that blows up. So, that is what you've got. Thank you. Not at all. <laughs> Anything else in this little library? Susie, it only feels right to see if you want to find out anything. Um, I will, um, I want to see what information I can get on uh, Battle of the Empty Barrow and, and theories on who the enemies were because no one knows cool investigation please thank you come on baby oh. uh 19 on a 19 I didn't uh, even need our help <laughs> <laughs> on a 19 you i uh, you confirm again that there is no record of who those people were that were fought by the clay father very weird very strange very strange there would here's what i will give you on a 19. if they were a known quantity on world there would be a record of them there, yeah. there would be some mention of who they were yeah, this is really bizarre. You think it could be some singular person? Yes, that might be able to multiply. Yes. Oh no! No! Um, Listen, tell me this is going where I think it's going to go. I mean, Paul, he doesn't know this. <laughs> <laughs> But Ravenall, your mind goes to this strange creature you met on one of your random teleporting walks. <laughs> teleporting walk? <laughs> just a little jaunt! Just a little jaunt! Not terrifying in the least. Something's in my mouth. Um... <laughs> what? What are you singing right now? <laughs> I was trying to sing. I was trying to replace the 
lyrics of a thousand miles by Vanessa Colton. Okay. And um Okay. It just so happened that I just I mean, started saying on script there's what something. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> I feel like I've made a similar joke before. <laughs> um, this time, completely by accident. Um, that was wonderful. Thank you. Um, Everybody okay. was triggered. <laughs> triggered! Okay, so confirmed it would be one singular person. That's not confirmed. That's not confirmed by well, me. Confirmed it could be. <laughs> One singular person. <laughs> Confirmed this thing we don't know might be something. <laughs> Confirmed we have a theory. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going to the Buffy at a uh, musical episode I've when everyone yes. says, I, ha I have a theory, it's a demon. A dancing demon or well, something isn't right there. Oh, I'm yes, the of the YouTube thing. crowd where it's like, a game theory. Yeah, that's also a good reference. That's also a reference. Um, right, so we have a theory. theory. <laughs> Thanks for playing. Um, <laughs> so we have confirmed we have a theory that it could be one person. Um, is there... Just to let, like... This was a, a battle with lots of people. Like, the air swifts disappeared. Seems so. So it would we have to be one hell of a singular person. To have bested an archfey and his champion and his army. Well, they can't possibly have wiped all of us out, because, I mean, I'm here. Well, it would be, if you're from a line that descended from someone who was there, that would be... Nothing's there. There's a reason it's called the empty barrow. Nothing was left. They never found any bodies. You don't think Theodore deserted, did you? I don't know. Oh, I really hope it's not that. Maybe the second the theory of the day. <laughs> well, if if Theodore didn't die there. Maybe he left because he was asked they wanted a chance for the family line to go on. So mm. they asked him to head off world. Possibly. And then she decided to pack it all in and be like, you know what we should do? Start a bakery. No, that's what I do. That's what I'd like to do right now. Go back and start up my bakery again. Um, okay. So, what now? And no, I don't think. No, what were you going to say? I thought and we can try this when the on the ship's <coughs> logs. We can try this when it's you know, connected back to the network and doesn't have spy malware on it. Um I just that planet that Evander was talking about, Vulpacar, hmm. where she thinks that John might be. That was part of the Ismeran Empire. It was an outlying planet. It was, but it it was. So I wonder if maybe it there might be something about it in the library here. But this it would have been would have been I don't know. I mean, there's no harm in trying. Yeah. True enough. There is no harm in trying. Go for it. Investigation check, if you'd be so kind. All right, everybody. Whomever wishes. And help actions and luck points are around to help you. Shall we do individual uh, ones? 
I'm we assuming all we up. all help each other so we can roll for advantage twice. We all roll with advantage. Advantage doesn't stack. So you, one person can give one other person advantage, but everybody can make either an investigation check or help someone else's, if that makes sense. Oh! Um, how I'm good does everyone think they are at investigating? I'm about as good as you are. Oh, what about you, Ravenall? Uh, according to this random piece of paper near me, it's a plus four. Go oh. I'll help you. I'll help you. Di- I'll help you, Ravenall. And I'll I'll just make my own roll just as a back. Uh, the librarian actually comes up at this point. Oh, hello. Uh, Hi. Hello. This is a Cagrian woman. Uh, <gasps> well, there are Cagrians on Ipia. Hello. Hello. Do you want a hug? I'd love a hug. All right. Hello. Lovely to... Uh, it's been oh, so wonderful. long since I've hugged a go- fellow goat. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that here. Big, big goat hug. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. This has made my day. Thank you so much. Oh, you're very welcome. My name is Winifred. What's yours? I'm, I'm Pure Georg. Pure Georg. Oh, a, a traditional name. How lovely. My my family are very much traditionalists. Wonderful. I just noticed that you had been spending a bit of time in the library, and I wondered if I could perhaps assist anybody in their investigations. Might I ask for your assistance, please? Absolutely. Thank you. And it's going to give you a help action as well. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you kindly, Winifred. Pat's pure Georg on the shoulder. With the help action, a 22. Very nice. That's not worth do anything. Yeah. <laughs> Eight and a nine for a 10 wow. and an 11. Um, but a 22 Thanks, is very good. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah, Willie sort of goes and tries to help. Like, are you sure your friend is all right? Why haven't they hugged a Cagrian in a long time? Oh, What's up with that? It totally distracts you from looking. <laughs> yeah. I'm like looking and like trying to be like, oh, well, his husband's been abducted, and I'm like, but I'm also oh. like, where the fuck is Vodacar? What where by the Dread here? Bakers? That's horrible. No, not by the Dread Bakers. No. Oh no, no. What's... we're because uh, uh, Pierre York is in from uh. I've forgotten the name of the fucking planet. Uzalan. Unan. Uzalan on Unan. Oh, wonderful. Different different line of Cagrians. Okay. Well, it's lovely that they have such traditional values, seeing as they're off-world. Is that... I don't know. It just seems nice to remember where you're from. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I, I must admit, I don't know our most... Cagrian, did the Cagrian race originate on Ipia? Oh, I sort of assumed so. I I imagined that if Cagrians were on another world and they had lived there, that they wouldn't have sort of n- names of a similar kind. That makes sense. Yeah. That, that would be quite the coincidence. Yes. That's, that was just my assumption. I, I don't know. Oh. Thank you. Dude, not at all. 22 investigation. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yes, you are looking for Vulpicar. You look through, these are much more uh, recent, uh, documents of the Asmerian Empire. It People love, it's like the Romans, right? People like <laughs> people love documenting the Asmerians and everything about them. Um, and there are extensive lists of sort of planets and various territories that... Uh, were under Esmeric control, especially during the Empire phase, sort of the last thousand, thousand two hundred years of um, the Esmeric reign. Eranor, the same guy, basically started con- uh, conquering many, many more worlds, uh, bringing them under under his reign. Um, and you do find in a list of uh, sort of outlier planets a uh, the planet of a Vulpicar. Um, uh, the only other notes and information you can find about the planet uh, 
on here are um, a list of significant uh, uh, colonizers uh, or colony races. Um, it has uh, written down uh, gnomes, the Dolkin, human, Dreltar, and star elves. Star elves. Yes. So this this was homebrew before D and D came out with astral elves. With D and D sake, you can call them astral elves. Uh, but but elves who are more uh, did say, travelers. Did you say Dreltar? Uh, Dreltar. Dreltar are a, and I'll write that for you if you like. Um, Thank you. Dreltar are a homebrew race in the races where you can find your Kagrian. Um, can we make it canon that um, Pjörg uh, does speak common, but, you know, isn't, like, grey? And so yeah, is absolutely. it, like, great with learning, with spelling common words? <laughs> yeah, that's totally fine. Yeah, it's all a Kagrian. <laughs> yeah, the person's like, oh, we do have sort of, like, translations, if you like. Um. <laughs> oh, you know, no. I, I, I would like to practice my comments, so that is appreciated, but thank you. Wonderful. Um, yes. Uh, so, uh, Dreltar are a subterranean, um, sightless sentient race, uh, who uh, are known to be uh, telepathic. Okay. Um, and, uh, um, Planetary significance, colon, research. And that is all the information you get on Vulpicar. Planet significance. Research. Okay. You know what? A 22 is really good. It's very good, isn't it? It's really good. It's really good. Please. I'm going to give you something. <laughs> or am I? Joshy boy. 22 mm -hmm. is a very yes. good roll. Please. <laughs> I'll better make him look into your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, again, somebody's written in the margin. Whoever this is, is like really, really prolific. Uh, is Marin God thought to have overseen this planet? Was Derafel? Question mark. To oversee planet. Was D E R I P H E L I P H E L Interesting, very interesting. Indeed. What do I recall about Darafel? I'll give this to you without a history check. Thank you. Uh, Darafel was the Esmeran god who. Uh, basically ran the religious side of conquering on behalf of Eranor. Oh, I didn't like this guy. Oh no, this guy was bad news. Uh, he, he was very much uh, a help in solidifying uh, the, the Esmerans as, as, as the gods of the planets that Eranor conquered uh, and wiping, specifically of Wiping out the re the previous religions. Oh. Uh, oh yeah. No, no. This was. No, the Ismerans were fuckers. Yeah, <laughs> they were very, very bad. At least at this point in history. Sure, in Aranor's reign, they certainly were. And I mean, some of them famously before that. Um. Yes. So Darafel Der was. Uh, yeah, Der Derafel was that guy, uh, and and was essentially the head of the Esmeran Church. Okay. 
Susie just has a sour look on her face now. You guys are learning so much. This is so cool. <laughs> we love a library episode. <laughs> oh, we love a library <laughs> session. Yeah. Like, there there was a session of uh, camp the first campaign that I ran with Alberta where she had her character stay in a library for eight hours a day for a week straight. No, it was 16 hours a day. I would sleep for eight hours. 16 hours a day. I didn't know at that point that I had was able to trance, so I could have been in the library. I don't know why I'm talking Even with longer. this accent. <laughs> I could have been in the library 20 hours a day. Um, and, uh, based, yeah, and, and solved the mysteries of the, of the game by doing that. It was so cool. Uh, but yeah, you guys, this is, you got some leads now. This is, this the is not insignificant. Reading. Stay in school, kids. The more you know. Libraries are important parts of your community. <laughs> Support your local library. Reading <laughs> rainbow. Butterfly in the sky. <laughs> I can fly twice as high. To take a book. It's in a look. Reading <laughs> rainbow. I only know that from the TikTok uh, meme. Is Same. that bad? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know that from Community, where Troy's obsessed with... Okay, thank God. It's <laughs> it was more of a North American thing. Yeah. And I think it was also more of an American thing, specifically. Oh, God, yeah. Because we didn't really have it. There were like sense I only found out about it through TikTok, to be honest. I remember in my primary school class, my, like, early grade... I had a grade one, two, three split class. Nightmare. Um, uh... There was a poster for the Reading Rainbow, but I had certainly never seen any. Yeah, Reading there Rainbow. was, wasn't there? Yeah, Miss Strong's. Class. I remember that in Miss Strong's. Class. Yeah. Huh. I'd never seen the Reading Rainbow though, no, so it was just was like cool. Yeah. I like both those things. <laughs> Reading and rainbows. Reading and rainbows. Reading Tight. and rainbows. Yeah, there's a lot in the UK. Reading and rainbows. <laughs> Is there anything else I can help you all with? The there i mean i got a lot of stuff i want to know but i don't want know if i want to do it all right now i'm just worried about making this a library episode <laughs> just spent the whole time in a library <laughs> can one of you whoever you'd like roll a luck check for me please who wants to roll i'll do it yeah goddess of luck has blessed you baby absolutely can I use my luck point for my luck check? You absolutely may, yes. Oh, fuck it, why not? So that is gone. Oh, that was better! 16. 16's good, nothing happens. Ah! <laughs> I quickly ask, and it's gonna be a really, really random question, but I've just gone back on my notes, and it just doesn't sit right with me, whether or not it's just a character thing for Hellebore. Do Archfage generally have six fingers on one hand? Or is that a bit sus for him? Ooh, this is interesting. Um, Arch Archfey, uh can sort of do whatever they want with their anatomy. So him having six fingers on one hand is strange, but it will have been done purposefully to be strange, if that makes sense. And he killed your father. And... <laughs> You're on a revenge quest. Six-fingered man. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Ravenall. Who <laughs> killed my father? My father. Prepare to die. Guy. No, Ravenall. I am your father. <laughs> That's Whoa, sick. there's too many yeah. things intersecting. Um, you, you can deduce a lot about an Archface personality by how they choose to appear. It was so, very scary. Him being very scary and off-putting tells you something about him. Because he had no some markings on him. He did. Can I ask about those really quickly? The mark- the, you didn't recognize the markings, uh, but- but, uh, they were there. <laughs> I mean, can you recall the markings so then we can look them up, maybe? Well, I I'll just 
I'll just, as Alberta, ask, are you sharing with the others that you're looking oh. into? Oh, yeah, Hellboy? I'll just be openly talking about it. I mean... I served under him for a period of time. So, I can try and answer any questions you have. I don't know anything that happened okay. after my time or before my time or possibly even during my time. I might not know, but some of it I, I will. I, like, the, like that statue, they got some of the details wrong. <laughs> Um, they really should write to the council about that. They should get a recommission. No, but it was artistic. I think it was artistic license. Oh, was it to propel uh, further beauty standards? Actually, it was about <laughs> scale. If it had been to scale, Hellebore would have been about the size of a D&D minifigure and the Titan would have been several stories high. Yeah. But if uh, anything, that makes it even more impressive that he was able to kill him. Yeah, yeah. No, I I mean, like, specifically, like, <coughs> his hair looks way better on the statue. And, like, he, <laughs> he, he is sexy in, like, a weird kind of off-putting way. Like, is he stone cold in personality as well? No. Oh, please tell me you got my joke. Because of the statue? Yes. Because, yes, because of the statue. Oh, yeah. I'm your yeah. gay best friend, Susie. You, I, I'm here to bring out the quips. I'm nice. here to be funny. I got confused. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I love you really, Susie. Thank you. You know, um, also, you know who also loves you? Benvolio. I don't think he does. Really don't. I think you've constructed a narrative about my relationship. Winnie, if you <laughs> if you knew someone who was equally as attractive as you were, and you were always endlessly flirting, but also were trying to kill each other all the time, wouldn't you say that was a lot of sexual tension? Oh, hang on. I'm not saying there isn't sexual tension, but like he's not in love with me. I Sorry, Winnie. I interrupted that goes too hand in hand with me. So. No, please don't let me interrupt. I just thought I just I knew a little bit of trivia and I wanted to be helpful. No, it was. It, it's I. It's hard to know that that's like that makes sense that they recorded the scale somewhere as that. But like in the moment, it's hard to know that that's the scale because you're just looking up a lot or you're shooting at like robot ankle joints so yes, so yes Winnie, exactly tall. what we are saying is that you need to take down the statue and then remake it all yourself no the statue is no 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 i'm saying the statue's great the statue's great. I'm just saying, like, I wouldn't know that the accurate scale is what Winifred told us because I was just seeing the bar <laughs> a robot chin. It was, it, it, it's still sort of an estimate. Yeah. People sort of debate about how many hundred feet tall Juthra was. Yeah. But very, very large. Yeah, I mean, if we knew where Juthra's body... Oh, that's gone. Yeah. Yes. It was taken for technology. Did I hear you say that you used to serve under him? <laughs> what? Yeah. Like, during the God War? Yeah. Oh, you must be one of those immortal people. Do carry yeah. on. <laughs> oh, Winnie, I actually, I wanted to ask... Uh, I mean, I know, I know you're a librarian, but do you, do you study? Do you study a PhD or something? <laughs> Why else do you think I'm working in the library? I don't know. Academics forever. Yes, but I, I wanted to know what think. you study or studied. I was just curious. I, I 
Yes, I studied lots. Insight <laughs> check <laughs> on, on Winifred. Go ahead and roll me an insight check. <laughs> Shit, but I know she's lying. Twelve. <laughs> Oh, oh shit. Check for what he read. She doesn't um, need uh, a PhD That's an eight from me. Oh, right. that is a natural two for a five oh, from Winnie. Nine. I, I forgot. Oh, wait, no. And I'm also proficient. Uh, so that's a 13. Incredible. Both wait, of you. 11. Anyway. I can both, math. both of you easily tell. Yeah, don't, absolutely lying. <laughs> you can be honest with us, Winifred. What are you talking about? I am being honest. Yes, many PhDs, much study. Did you can also that. just enjoy reading books in a library. I do enjoy that. Really only, like, you really don't actually need the PhD to be a librarian, even in an academic library. Is that true? That is true. Okay, cool. Yeah, like Did most, you... most will have their masters, but not you necessarily. You would know that if you worked it. Do you work here? Yes, I do. I do work here. Yes, Winifred, that's can true. Can I see your staff ID, you please? You shouldn't need that. I should. I want I, to compliment okay. you shh, 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 to the shh, library shh, coordinator. Stop talking about the staff ID. Okay, I walked in the. I walked in one day, and the librarian was dead, so I stashed his body, and I'm the librarian now. But, but, but this is a lot of information. Listen, Without... no one's noticed. I've just carried on. I've learned the systems. I read the books. I hope you got paid. I take the checks that come through the door. My name might be temporarily George on Fridays. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. Just, just, just don't tell anyone. That's fine. Can you, can you tell me a little bit more about um, George? Yes, so he was wearing brown leather boots, uh, sort of, uh, jeans, kind of a light blue jeans, uh, he had glasses on, he had this staff ID, flashes George's staff ID. Well, yes, that... I, I gather that, but about, like, maybe, d did you know anything, like, about, about what he studied, or can we, I'm just really... I walked into this library and the old librarian was gone and I saw a chance to start making some money by doing something where nobody was going to look at me. So, like... No. <laughs> is your Susie, name... I, Susie, Winifred? I really want to find out about George. My name is Winifred, yes. Alrighty. Nobody who comes in here pays the checks. Yeah. Well, of course. Ain't that always the case? Uh, can I get a luck check from someone here? I'll do it. Go for it. Do I use my luck point? Up to you. How bad is it? It's an 11. It's not too bad. I mean, yes, a, 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 my, what was it, 16 didn't make it, but like... Your 16 did make it. I think it's oh. the higher is what we want. Low is like bad luck. Like when... When uh, Raven all rolled. It was very good three. that nothing happened. Yes. Oh, I see. I am going to use my luck point. Do I have to use the new roll? You do. What's the new roll? <laughs> oh, no. Avandra, why you do this to me? <laughs> Uh, you guys hear shouting outside and what sounds very much like gunfire. Oh, no. What if it's, you I'm going to get under the table, yes. Yes, you do exactly that. We're badasses. We can kick these these people to, to dust. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> you guys... Make your way into the streets of, of Wild Folks Folly. Uh, okay. You make your way out. It seems like to the north, in the Duelist Square, 
uh, there seems to be uh, a gathering of many, many people. You, you, you'd have to get closer to see exactly what's going on, but uh, you can see the smoke of open torches uh, rising above them, and you can hear the shouts. Oh. Are they in common? Yeah. Uh, common, Cagrian, uh, Goblin, uh, lots of different languages, but a few that you pick up, absolutely. Okay. Sylvan. Elvish. Where do you know where they're targeting? Uh, it seems for the moment like you're you're looking at a pre-riot. Oh no. You're you're looking at a bunch of uh, unhappy civilians gathering. Okay. Um, um yeah. I'm going to run up. I'm gonna pretend I'm one of the civilians, be like, oh yes, fuck the system, it's really shit. What are we protesting? <laughs> um <laughs> person uh turns to you, uh give me one sec to find out what kind of person you are dealing with. Eh. Uh a a human turns to you, uh sort of a um Yeah, uh this uh, this guy uh looks at you goes what are we protesting we're protesting the fact that our family members are being taken and the wild guard not doing a damn thing about it they still got plates in the city we gotta burn them all we gotta make sure that none of them nature types get in here and take our people anymore that is understandable um let me go get my torch. <laughs> <laughs> and I go back and relay that to the and team. And he takes a 9mm and just shoots it in the air. Ah! It's going to get pretty aggressive. Alrighty. Do there seem to be any instigators? Uh, do there seem to be instigators? There is... Give me a perception check, if you'd be so kind. Alrighty. Um, oh no. Eight. You it's can't, so much noise uh, going on. May I make a perception check? Absolutely. Uh, Raven, all your also welcome to completely rolled off the tray. <laughs> it's not just people without dice trays. Now I just kind of people with tiny dice trays as well as I do have a very small. Thanks for reference. I'm gonna unblur my background. This is my dice tray. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's so small. It's so tiny. In oh, 17. Sorry. Wait, uh, no. Uh, I rolled a 17. That would be a dirty 20. Dirty 20. Uh, what did you say, uh, Daisy? Uh, can I just kind of shimmy my way in and. I'm going to do a roguey thing where I'm going to try and take someone's gun. <laughs> I mean, absolutely. Um, give me a sleight of hand check and then we'll resolve both these things. Oh, yeah. I'm going to use my luck for that. <laughs> oh, all right. That will be everybody's oh, luck. Shit. That is on the floor. For reference, I don't have a dice tray. Um, that would be a 27. Oh my god! Ivandra, she paid out! Um, the two sides of luck. Um, on a 27, gee effing whiz, give me one sec. Love level 4 rogue with proficiency. Oh. And expertise. <laughs> Would you like an automatic pistol or a hunting rifle or a shotgun? These are better guns. A shotgun? You absolutely, you absolutely snag a shotgun from somebody. The person uh, was sort of like waving it in the air, uh, kind of like uh, lowers it to kind of like this, just, whew, arms are tired. Well, hey, where did my shotgun go? <laughs> and you, uh, you have grabbed a shotgun. Um, right. If you've got the uh, the document, actually, I'll send it to you uh, just again now to keep it easy. 
Uh, oh, I'm not keeping it. I'm giving it to Susie. Oh, that's very cool. Uh, that's so nice. You snag a shotgun, bring it back to Susie, even as Pure Georg makes out a gold dragonborn woman at the head of the crowd. Mm -hmm. uh, I automatically love her. <laughs> who seems to be rallying this crowd, this angry mob of people. Honestly, and... she can do what she wants. <laughs> And that is where we're going to take a bio break, and then we'll come back and see how this situation <laughs> resolves itself. Toodaloo, one and all! Welcome back, everybody, to Sing and Die in the Wolves! This voice is a carryover from uh, a second ago. Um, oh. We're back. So you guys are seeing this crowd, this this uh, this angry mob being rallied by a golden dragonborn. Um, there are wild guard present, sort of like police officers. They don't seem to be able to fully contain what's happening here. There are a lot of people, a lot of guns, and other weapons. I... One less gun. One less gun. I would like hand. to try and get to the front of it and try and get a proper look, uh, like a proper view of the the dragonborn. Absolutely, you make your way to the front of the crowd, um, and this woman uh, manages to get a degree of quiet while she does this like rallying speech. Um, she looks like a common person. She's wearing ordinary sort of, uh, clothes, uh, as are most people here. There are a few people who have, like, pieces of armor, uh, either, like, the, that they've owned or made. Uh, she does seem to have some, like, like a leather pauldron on one side and sort of a bandolier, uh, with ammunition on it. Um... She's also wearing sort of like more of a jacket. Uh, and she uh, essentially is saying, you know, uh, I, sp I know I speak for us all when I say that we have had enough. This is not a tenable situation. We've all lost people. I myself have lost my husband to those things out there. And if we ever want to stop, we have to claim this city for ourselves and for our children. There are powers out there in the Anoran Assembly who will help us secure this place. We just need to be the ones having that conversation. This intermediary of the Wild Guard is not helping matters at all. Um, and uh, seems to start proposing marching on the constabulary with this angry mob to demand uh control be given to them of the city yes we can stop them uh people roar people are still uh, the 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 they're still getting amped up this woman Steps down off of her little, like, wooden box. Uh, I step on the box! <laughs> nope! <laughs> mm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this woman seems very keen for you not to do that. What did you say? Okay. We can help. We can help. We can fix this. Look, me and my friends, we, we, we just got to Ipia, and we see that things are really bad for you right now. And... Yeah, no kidding. But the last thing I want is for this whole beautiful city to be broken just because something can be fixed when it doesn't have to be. Look at me, uh, me and Susie and Ravenall and Ro and all of my friends. We want to help you. And if that can prevent loads of homes and, and buildings being broken, then, then we can do that. Wonderful. So you're going to... Negotiate the surrender of the Wild Guard for us and uh, no, help us stop. get extra help from the NRN Assembly. Y yes! 
Who in the assembly do you have connections to? No one. Alrighty. Who amongst these people here do you expect to stand guard on the walls? And have more Every... training than the wild guard. Wild guard need to do more than they are doing. I don't disagree. Although I think they're doing a lot. But if you, you're the one living here, you're the one seeing what they're doing. I know that I've been outside of help has been called in, including myself. But your advantage is not to be found in taking out the wild guard here. And I've been involved in a lot of taking down of the overarching power structures of a place. She really has. You're absolutely right. Just a first step. Once we get the wild guard on board, we burn the forest down. 100 miles in every direction. That is... That's going to cause right. more problems than answers. Oh, it, the planet's going to fight back. And How long have you lived on it, Bia? All my life. How long have you been alive? <laughs> Sorry, that's just me laughing because I was just like, right, I know what you mean now. Um, <laughs> uh, 40 years. Okay. What's your name? Anali. Anali. Good to meet you. My name's Susie. Susie. Anali, you have not seen a blink of this planet's life. And I don't care to see a blink more if this is what the planet is. Frankly. Then you're shooting yourself in the foot with that shotgun. Uh, she doesn't have a shotgun. <laughs> just, With just whatever weapon you have that I can see that I can reference. She, you don't see a weapon on her. Well, okay. Uh, you're shooting yourself. You're punching yourself in the foot. You're, you're. <laughs> 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 you're cutting your nose to spite your face. <laughs> Look, Anali. Taking out the planet, that's you're just killing the planet you live on. I'm it does make that's, this it, home safe again. By killing everything around it? What are you going to do for crops? What are you going to do for water? Well, we grow. Seed imported from off world, outside of the influence of the Archbay. It's going to be remarkably expensive. Sure. And How's the city going to pay for it? We'll figure it out. I really don't think you thought, thought very far ahead if that's your answer for how the city's going to pay the Anaran Assembly. You know what I've noticed about people who uphold the status quo? They always start talking upholding. about three steps ahead, four steps ahead. Let's talk about the people who are dying now, shall we? Yes, let's. What are we going to do about the people who are dying? And more people will die if you now. haven't thought out a proper plan. Oh, <laughs> but far fewer than if these people stay in charge. Let me assure you of that. All right. Have you considered going to the Wild Guard and asking for more say in things? Hey, look around you. This is my big door knocker. <laughs> Pointing to the crowd. You think they'll notice? You think they might be willing to come to the table now? I think they'll be a little distracted trying not to get shot and killed and trying to keep y'all from shooting and killing each other. That genius back there just shot a bullet into the sky in a crowded place. Bullets that fall from the sky kill. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Alright, you gotta be very careful while you aim those things. And they were not being careful. Alright? Things can go back to normal when things are back to normal. Until You're then, people can be on doing that anyway. the good, the right thing gets done. Now, you know, going I have to an appointment at the constabulary now. What about if the heirs you lie helped? Hey, you bring them here, have them help us. Go. Well, we're headed to the watchtower first to do some work. To try and figure things out to help you folks to see if you can get a little bit 
of an idea ahead if there are going to be any attacks because these things take time. Alrighty. And so... We're moving out! Anger doesn't solve your problems. You need to channel it somewhere. And you, my dear lady, are not being very productive with your anger. These folks are with the Wild Guard, everyone. We are not. Guns start being pointed at you from the crowd. People are starting to look at you with angry looks. She's staring you down as these people prepare to lynch you. Raven all. Mm. You make sure... That if things go south, you two get out all right. She kind of just like shuffles in front, stares Anali straight down. So Anali, that's your name, isn't it? Yeah. Tell these people to leave us alone. Get out of our way. You won't get hurt. This is your last warning. Is that Anali's true name? So, we have since talked a little bit more about true names and the mechanics therein. I sent you a document. Maybe it's all good. I'm going to talk about it now. Um, in essence, uh, true names as you would know them are residence names. Pe the names by which people know themselves. Mm. Um... Anali's, uh, Anali has given that name. Boop, boop. Do, 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 do. Um, if Anali self-identifies under that name, that is, that would be her resonance name. Uh, and a true name would be something deeper that she herself wouldn't even know. But, uh, your, your ability works on resonance names, yes. May um, I attempt? Um, absolutely. So you are invoking resonance name. Ba -ba -ba -bum. So this would be like a command or a suggestion that you attempt to use an invocation of uh, that on. Uh, of that name mm -hmm. on, correct? Yes. What are you telling Anali to do? How far does that go? Like, how much of a command? Um, is it like a one task, or can it be like... It's like a suggestion spell. Okay. So it can be like a course of action. So... I'm going to very politely... Ask her. <laughs> <laughs> Ask these people to lower their weapons and go back to their homes to think on this. Kind of like disband them and let them as mm -hmm. much influence as you can give to the group. Cool. Um, very, very cool. You invoke Anali's name and make that command there is a sound that ripples out from you that passes through and out of pure Georg and Susie you recognize this it's strange magic uh, you're not altogether familiar with and Anali looks at the three of you huh hey folks these people say they're gonna fix all our problems these three are the wild guard solution to everything that's going on here. So, I say we give them 24 hours. What do you think, people? 
I and think it's an excellent deal. All of our problems aren't solved in 24 hours. Well, we'll know, won't we? And we'll meet right back here again tomorrow. I can shake your hand on it. I'll shake she your hand on it. does not take either of your hands. Come on, folks. Let's give them one day. And then no one can say that we haven't been reasonable. That really don't think that's fair to say but and you know that anali is going to make a persuasion check against the crowd with advantage okay and then the crowd will make charisma save which is a nat one the crowd like the idea and and laugh uh with a great deal of mirth at the uh outlandish claim that the small group of people could deal with all of wild folk folly's problems in the next 24 hours uh and begin to disperse anali does not stay is not interested in listening to you Makes her way Before over. she goes, yeah. <laughs> um, question. Yes. I want to detect thoughts, but I want to know if I can find something specifically that makes her tick, or can like make her calm down, or like see reason. Uh, so detect thoughts. We'll read her surface thoughts, and then if you want to go further, uh, that's mm -hmm. a wisdom save on her part. Okay. But she would know that I'm trying to read her mind. Um, let me read Detect Thoughts. The, the surface level thoughts you'd get for free and uh, she would not know. Okay. I know for Charm Person or something, they would know? They can, I believe, with Detect Thoughts, once you try and dig deeper, then they might know. Mm-hmm. Uh, do do do. Probe deeper in the same creature's mind. Chugga makes a wisdom saving throw. If it fails, you gain insight into its reasoning. If it succeeds, either way, the target knows that you are probing into its mind. Okay. If you do the second, like dive deeper. If you do this, if you dive deeper into their thoughts, they will know. Either way, if I succeed or fail. If, well, if they, if succeed, they or succeed or fail. If you probe deeper. But you can learn the surface thoughts of this woman. You know what? No harm in if they're not going to know if I detect thoughts now. That's true. So uh, I'll hear what yeah, initial thoughts are first. Um, her initial thoughts, uh, her, her surface thoughts... Is almost, are, are almost a weird conversation uh, with herself. She's she's thinking almost yes, that was like that was a reasonable thing that will solidify our position. And the other side is going like, people are going to die because we don't get this done today. That it, uh, be seeming reasonable can't possibly be worth it. And then the thoughts come back. It's like, yes, but now that it's done, you can't really go back on it. We'll get more people tomorrow. We'll be sure to succeed. Uh, there's there's almost like a dissonance in the surface thoughts of this person about what's just happened. trying to maybe trying to explain away why she just did what she did exactly. even though it's not in her nature to do okay because i have a feeling with the stuff that we want to do i don't know if we're going to do it in 24 hours um <laughs> um i will try and go deeper okay i will 
<laughs> it's probably a, a terrible decision. Um, I, depends. Mm. Wisdom saving throw. Wisdom save. I'm just pulling up the stat block. To get this uh, wisdom save. All right, I'm gonna. Uh, can you tell me what your spell save DC is, please? It's it's fourteen. Fourteen. Fourteen's not bad. It's not good. <laughs> if I... it was like a sixteen or a seventeen, I'd be like, yeah, that's pretty okay. But like fourteen, I'm like, uh. So. I'm going to oh, tell wow. you straight up, Anali yeah. has a plus six to wisdom saving throws, so I need an eight or higher in order to beat this on the die. Oh, Here we go. Fuck. It's a natural one. No! It is. <laughs> this is no! not the die that's been charging. This is my Evandra! <laughs> oh my fucking god, I can't believe that. Incredible. <laughs> okay, what you thinking? What are her deepest, darkest you, secrets? If it's Spill fails, you insight into its reasoning, its emotional state, and something that looms large in its mind. Looms large, that's what I want. Looms large. Um, this person is in an emotional state of distress. Um... She, uh, she is deep in the throes of grief. Uh, do 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 emotional state. Reasoning. Um, her husband has died. Mm. Her husband's been killed. And she, uh, sees that the situation is sort of remaining the same and slowly degrading and that's not acceptable she's genuinely does care about the people of the city and is trying to make this place better for them and uh and believes earnestly that the best way that she like the way that she can save the most people is by taking control away from Isabel Spruce and the constabula uh, the wild guard uh something that is looming large in her mind is that she said earlier that she has no context in the NRN assembly that's true she does however uh do business with the Pacme Corporation and has been offered and in fact has already received uh, funds and weaponry to uh, better arm the people of the city to take over the city. Okay. What was the name of the corporation again? Pacme. P-A-K-M-I. They if are... If we do fail, I sincerely hope Pacme served you well. Um... Very cool. Um... She is going to. <laughs> She's going to turn around. And. She is going to get you all in an enervating breath weapon attack. Um, so she. Uh, is going to need everybody. I'm going to need everyone to make a DC 14 constitution saving throw. You'd be so kind. Sorry, oh. folks. <laughs> <laughs> Fifteen. Fifteen passes. Alright. No. Luck passes and, and comes, because I rolled a two, so that's a six. Six is gonna fail. Oh! Okay, well, let's get this from Ravenall first, but... 
19. 19 passes. We are going to need a wild magic surge roll for the casting of oh, Detect shit. Thoughts. Oh, shit, yes! How did I get that? I fully forgot that again. So that's a d20. You do not have your luck point anymore on a 1 through 6. I really want a wild surge in a group <laughs> of wild blast. <laughs> Shit, it's a 16! <laughs> okay. You could have killed so many people. <laughs> yeah, but where's the fun in that? <laughs> where's uh, the fun in failing? One through seven. I'm going to need everybody to roll initiative as pure Georg. You are incapacitated by this breath weapon. Uh, and we go into combat. Uh, she fully turns... You have attacked her as far as she is concerned. And is going to fight you. Oh, I really made a bad choice. 22 from Susie. Oh. Let's get I made a terrible choice. We've all been there. We've all been there. Anali's initiative count is a natural 20. What does that put her at, though? Natural 19? So it's still a 19. <laughs> that still puts her first. <laughs> I know, I just wanted to, you know, still feel good about myself. It puts her at a 20, but I'm going to get her to go first. <gasps> Betrayal! <laughs> Betrayal! <laughs> she she just... <gasps> Josh already gave us, like, that little sneaky extra bit of lore. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but Ebsen I close. rolled really good initiative. It's <laughs> not going to be first. Ooh, at least tell me how to spell Anali. Yes, I will do that now. Um, A N N A L I, and that is how you spell Anali. Thank you. And That's a pretty ooh, name. At eighteen, wonderful. So. I don't have a battle map for where you are right now. Uh, <laughs> so we're going to... fuck shit up. We are going to do this theater of the mind, uh, if everyone is okay with that. Oh, of course. Uh, fan... So what does it mean when I'm incapacitated? Can't do uh, jack shit. You cannot uh, take actions, bonus actions, or reactions. Uh, I can just move and next... dash or hide. Those are actions and bonus actions. You Moving can move. You can, talk you can move. To us. You can move and talk. <laughs> <laughs> Give me one sec. Uh, Integrating breath. Blah, blah, blah. Un incapacitated until the start of your next turn. Um. Blah, 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 blah. In this case got that off as a surprise round, I will say. So it comes back around to her turn and the innervation, the incapacity. This is this is my compromise for the Nat 20 uh, thing, is that you aren't you are no longer incapacitated by the start of uh okay. her next turn, which is first in the initiative. Uh, so we are going to, uh, she's going to go first. Um, she is going to blah, 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 blah. She, uh, reaches under her coat and pulls out a, uh, laser pistol. No! This is technology none have? of you have seen before. But she have takes I? out... No. Takes out her gun. Uh, points it at Pure Georg. No, I asked for it, it's fine. <laughs> uh, and is going to make a couple of attacks. Um, gets plus six to this. That's an eight as her first attack. It doesn't hit. Wow. <laughs> a 25 for the okay. second hit. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, no need to show off, because that does do it. <laughs> <laughs> and you will take... I do have this written somewhere. Wait. Okay. Yeah. Ah. Ah. <laughs> ah. <gasps> Reaction. 
What's your reaction? Uh, shield. You're more than welcome to cast shield. What does that put your AC to? Uh, it goes up to uh, 19. 25 is still going to hit. I Oh, I thought maybe that could do me less damage. Uh, but go ahead and roll wild magic surge for casting shield. Fuck it, yes. <laughs> oh, oh my god. <laughs> the two undead, well, undead and mortal are like, mm-mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, honey, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> what did you roll? No, oh, I haven't rolled have it yet. yet. Okay. It's 14. Okay, one through eight for the next casting. You take only seven points of radiant damage. Uh, as she fully shoots you, and free action to talk calls out to the people. People have started to go, but there are still a lot of people in this square. By the way, you're in the Duelist Square. The, uh... Scene setting, Josh. Uh, the statue of the Edifitra Titan Juthra uh, being slain by the triumphant figure of Hellebore is the main statue uh, in this square. Hellebore looking beautiful, flowing hair, uh, a wicked barbed spear in is depicted in mid-air, uh, and the spear is... Uh, sticking into the eye of the titan uh which seems kind of like a marvel celestial uh seems to be very very tall with sort of like multiple eyes going down uh its head but like almost a, a slender sleek filigree kind of look uh about it but it's also been made to look unappealing and broken and destroyed in places so there are like pieces missing and cracks running through uh, that sort of design. Um, calls to the pe uh, people here. I'm going to roll initiative for some of the people who turn around to fully kill you guys. Okay. Uh, Susie, that's your turn. Alrighty. Um, I am going to hop up on the statue. Hop up on the statue. Yeah. Uh, fantastic. Can I get uh, an athletics from you? Can I... <laughs> acrobatically... You can acrobatics this, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I can't knock the hustle. Uh, 17. 17, yes. You, uh, you clamber up... Yeah, up, up fairways. It's like a 10-foot tall statue. Thank you. Uh, yes. I'm gonna get up there, and I'm gonna say, I'm gonna yell out to the crowd, HOLD UP THE LOT OF YA! Anything else you wanna say? Yes. I'm using my action to talk. Yep. Um, it would seem your grief is being taken advantage of by Pacmicorp, the fucking vultures. Okay. I'm gonna and then I'm gonna say, go for it, go for it. Um, I resent being accused of upholding the status quo. I was here, and I gesture to the statue. I was here at the defeat of the Edifitra Titan Juthra. I saw this land bent under the foot of the Esmeran Empire, and I helped raise up and fight against it. Because I love this planet. I love this planet and the people of it. And I came here for my own reasons. When I heard y'all needed help, I'm putting my shit aside for y'all. All right, I died twice at this motherfucking battle. Twice. I've suffered worse deaths than that, but it was a bit of a bitch. All right. 
And Ali, I'm sorry for your loss. We will do everything we can to help you, but fighting and potentially having civilian casualties because of the rest of y'all, not because of a, a real enemy, is not going to help you. If parents go, don't go home today to their kids because of a riot in Duelist Square, that's not going to help them. So lay down your fucking arms, friends, Ippy and now Shrems and countrymen. I will ask you for either a persuasion or a performance check or an intimidation check with can advantage. I, can I, can I, okay, you already have advantages. <laughs> I was going to say, um, mm -hmm. as a, I was going to say something in my, during my turn, but that's way more badass, so there's no point. <laughs> um, I was pretty badass. I was going to, I was going to put my hooves up and kneel. Mm -hmm. For her to just take a free shot okay. as a way of me saying sorry let's see how this goes and your turn is next in the initiative order Seventeen. It, what check is that? That was a persuasion check. Okay. Uh, most people uh, stop and are uh, taken by the image you strike and the passion of your words. Uh, a couple of people put that. One guy takes his hat off, puts it on his heart, a little tear. <laughs> Makes his way down his cheek. But not everybody is listening. Mm -hmm. That was a very important move and well epping done. Thank you. There are a couple people. Who look like they've got red mist over their eyes. Yeah. Who are still coming. There were gonna be. Thank you very much. Not at all. That was very successful, though. Thank you. you I... Around 80% of the crowd are gone. <laughs> gonna go away. Good. Save, your, <laughs> save yourself. Thank you. And as a bonus action, I will second win. <laughs> win 2d10 plus 5. Hitch points. <laughs> <laughs> I need them healing. I rolled a one. No, no! That's a six. It gets me up to thirty. Thirty-two. Uh, That's not bad. No, it's pretty good. Uh, fantastic. Jorg, Jorg, that is your turn. Do you still wish to let her take a shot? Hmm. Um. Tell me, was Alani looking at Susie the whole time, or was she? What was her eyeline like? Uh, she shot you. Uh, mm -hmm. looks grim and determined. Only glances up when Susie says, "Pack me, Corp are using you," but uh. Seems split on who she should kill first. I just said I died twice, so. <laughs> she, she's not, not been listening very closely. Yeah. No, and I'm not pointing that out because that would make her less inclined to kill me and more inclined to kill Pyokior. So I'm not pointing that out, and I didn't say anything right now, DM. Understood. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just wanted to understand you. I've never known pain until recently. I lost my husband too. I don't want seeing any more people in pain. And I caused that for you. I only wanted to... 
Oh, I genuinely only wanted to wish you a safe fight, but I just caused you pain. So, I genuinely, and Pure Georg genuinely, like, tries to step forward until it feels like I'm breaching it, I'm pushing it. We're still in combat. It's not a tense, but, like... This person has a gun leveled at you. You can move towards them as you as you will. Just letting you know. No, I am. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but as much as I feel like, you know, you can kind of feel an awe of someone. Be like, you're coming a bit too close. You you're too close at where you were before. Uh, okay, so I'll just I just I just won't move. Um. So. And then pure Yog kneels, puts his head down. Take this surrender and whatever you want thrown at me as an apology. Just please, no more pain. You want to apologize? You don't want any more pain? That's why we want to help you. And you can help me by atoning with your life. And she's, she's, looks like she's gonna shoot you again. Uh, Ravenall, the start of your turn, you feel agonizing cramps of hunger rack your body. And oh, you yes. feel drained from having invoked Anali's name a minute ago. Can I get a luck check? If you'd be so kind. 16? 16 is good. Uh, you see faint rainbow light begin to arc through your veins and in your body. You feel your body wants to start changing, but you're able to force it to remain where it is if you so choose it is your turn in initiative you see anali take a step forward reloading her laser pistol pointing at pure Gjord's head how close are they together are they like within five foot is it like going to be point blank uh they are around 15 feet away from each other now it will be point blank by the time Anali's turn comes around. I think Ravenel feels really, really conflicted. Like he's being mm -hmm. here and fighting again. And it's like But seeing Paul Yorg just just willing to take that is there's just this deep rooted anger of just just even being here, like this place made her this way like there's mm -hmm. so much anger she is going to peg it <laughs> to Nari like run as fast as she can yeah attempt vampiric bite around the shoulder neck area okay shit <laughs> I genuinely was, I'm at that point where I'm like, am I going to have to get out Becca Sonora's character sheet? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows how things Check might out. go. <laughs> <Shit>. um, <laughs> okay, you uh, give me an attack roll for your bite. I don't have that to hand. <gasps> no! No way! <laughs> 20. Um, oh, incredible. <laughs> Natural 20? Incredible! And because it's a vampiric bite, I plus 3, so it's a 23 if you really want to know. That's amazing! Tell me what happens! A lot, I need to read it. <laughs> is this um, uh, Dampier? Yes, and it is a natural weapon that I am proficient in. Incredible. There it is. So she kind of just like... It's kind of like building up this like 
I'm pissed. <laughs> and just at the last leg of getting to her, just kind of flies. Yeah. And just kind of swoops. And just kind of... How tall is she? I assume she's quite tall. Yeah, she's she's uh, she's pushing six feet tall. Okay, she's double my height. Um, <laughs> so it's kind of all like a bit like get round her and just kind of hi. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just kind of typical vampire style, like heh. yeah, absolutely. You feel your teeth uh, bind that uh, that that chink in the scales uh, of her neck and shoulder, and just slip underneath and into the flesh uh, below. So you're going to roll 1d4 and then add max damage, which would be 4. Uh, uh, plus 3, so you add your constitution modifier to the attack and damage rolls when you attack with your bite. Oh, I really don't want to kill this woman. Incredible. <laughs> yeah, I. oh, I would like to say that. If this kind of knocks her, cool. I, I don't want to kill her. I just want to kind of then place her down gently while she naps. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> So it's going to be a plus seven would be the max. Yep. And then, and then a plus D4. six. So three plus three is six. Plus seven is 13. Uh, where are you getting the plus six from? Because I just rolled a D4, which is three. Yep. And I plus my constitution modifier, which is a plus three. Plus so which... the four from the crit of the D4. So that's ten. Do I not plus the three again? No. No. On the attack roll. Okay, then plus ten. Um, yes. Ten. Ten does not bring Anali down. Uh, also... But you regain... You... Yeah. Sorry, go for it. So I can choose... So when I bite a creature that is, isn't a construct or undead, you can empower yourself with the one of the following ways. I'm going to choose again a bonus to the next ability check or attack roll you make. The bonus equals the damage dealt by the bite. And <laughs> you get a plus 10 to the next ability check or attack Jeez! roll you make. Bad. Holy hell. And I am going to come in action disengage. Yep. And spider climb kind of halfway up the statue, kind of like here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, absolutely brilliant. Uh, she. Ah! Deus Ex Ravenol. Uh, Deus Ex Ravenol. <laughs> Amazing. Um, yeah, she looks far tougher than a lot of the commoners here. Um, next up is going to be the commoners. Uh, oh boy. Well, this is going to be a D twenty roll, and uh, the idea of this was that the number I rolled would be the number of commoners that come into the fight. Um, but there's a 80% fewer than that. So we'll see what happens. I'll figure it out. Ah! So now you gotta do math. Now I gotta do math. Um, we're gonna call that two. We're going to call that two commoners coming in strong here. Uh, they are going to make attacks with... Uh, one of them's got an automatic pistol, and the other one has a hunting rifle. Who uh, the citizens? Back me. <laughs> back, back me, Corp. <laughs> uh, so yes, uh, the first one, they get a plus two to hit because they're commoners, mm-hmm. uh, is going to... Uh, shoot with a pistol at do, 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 do. yeah I'm gonna fully say uh, shooting at Ravenall because uh, that's terrifying that's a natural one <laughs> <laughs> did they shoot the other commoner <laughs> no they did not uh, just bullets spray everywhere and the other one is going to uh, hunting rifle attack Susie who's on top of the statue Coming at me. They're coming at you. That's an 18 to hit. That'll hit. Okie day. That's, ooh, that's 2d8 piercing damage. 
for a total of eight points of piercing damage. All right. Exactly average damage for this weapon. I take it and don't blink. What the hell? She fucking died twice, man. What in tarnation? Uh, very cool. Uh, we go back to the top of the initiative that is going to be Anali herself. Anali doesn't look like she's doesn't look like she's gonna stop here. Mm. Now, I, you're kneeling. I'm not gonna count it as prone. Um, are you sorry? Are you allowing her to shoot you in this moment? Oh, because that's happened. I think mm, I'm still knee kneeling. Yeah. But I will be honest, I don't think I look as ready to die. Great. More more <laughs> like I'm just confused because I thought I was about to die. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do have your reaction back, by the way. I do. Uh, just so you know. So whatever happens here, let's find out. Is she rolling at disadvantage because she's within five feet using a ranged attack? No. I thought I'd ask. I figured that <laughs> would be the answer. goes within ten feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's way uh, better. <laughs> shield! Are you shield? <laughs> you can call shield after finding out what the number is. Oh. <laughs> That's a 16. Shield! Shield will protect you from that <laughs> shot. I'm gonna need a wild magic surge oh, roll no. <laughs> on a one through eight. This is getting silly now. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Um. No. What you get? What you get? What you get? What you get? I rolled in that one. No. Oh, okay. This works because I think this was purely reflex. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is this is fun. Um, bonus action means Susie out of there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I I really hope this doesn't uh, <laughs> kill keep, civilians. Well, kill civilians, Vine, but also make the civilians go. Hey, that Cagrian's using wild magic. I wonder if they're a nurse. <laughs> oh, Except shit. They shouldn't, because that would be racist and presumptuous of them. Yes, I don't exactly. think it's racist to... Racist. I do... It would be like if a Kennedy did something. It's not white people. It's... You know what I mean? It's all... This... It's an Ursweff. <laughs> it's an yeah, Ursweff. But yeah. they're just assuming, oh, this Cagrian... Oh, yeah, no, it's prejudice Ur for sure, yeah. What if I call it racist? It sounds worse. That's true. What did you get on a D100 roll? I got a 63. We're gonna find out what the hell that is. I don't want to kill people. Oh. I'm actually really ah. scared. <laughs> <laughs> um, you uh, feel a cloud of fog spew out of your eyes and nose and mouth. Uh, just fog just uh, spreads across the ground and envelops you and Anali and the commoners on the ground. Uh, actually, we're gonna look at the fog cloud spell because that is what has just happened. Shit! This is very interesting. Not as dramatic as maybe we thought. 20 foot radius sphere of fog centered on yourself. That's a big fucking sphere. That's a really big sphere. I'm you gonna get... run. I'm gonna run for my fucking life. <laughs> it is not your turn, but uh, on your turn, you're more than welcome to do so. The sphere spreads around corners. The area is heavily obscured, uh, which means it is basically as though you cannot see. Um, I feel like Ivandra has blessed me so many times today. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely, yeah, it's been good. Oh and it lasts for an hour without oh concentration. My God. Yep. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, Anali's going to take her second attack at disadvantage because she cannot see you. Mm hmm. 
And that's a 17, which I don't believe will hit. Shield no, blast around. You should won't. be good. Yeah. Uh, lasers ping off of your arcane shield as you feel uh, your wild magic surge out of you. Uh, yeah, mist continues to pour out of uh, your eyes and nose. You cannot see through this spell yourself. Uh, you just see fog. Great. And smell pea soup. Why? Why pea soup? That's just the name for thick fog. It's another oh. name. Pea soup. I never knew that. Yeah. Learning. Yeah. That makes uh, that a. No, I'll, it reminded me of something. We can talk about this after the session. <laughs> all. It's good. not. It, it's just a complete tangent. If I say it, so let's carry on. Uh, Susie, that is your turn as Anali purses and can't see a damn thing. Alrighty. Um, what I am gonna do is I am an expert shot. Yeah. I am going to uh, navigate my pistol towards where I saw Anali was. Yep. And aim at her shoulder where I think that was i'm trying to make her drop the gun essentially okay and um because disadvantages and advantages don't stack i am going to use crosshairs as a bonus action to grant advantage on all the attacks i make using my gunfighter form this turn absolutely the disadvantage i might have incurred from any called shot or whatever, and the disadvantage of seeing, it's still a normal shot. It's an even shot. Absolutely. All your shots for the round. Yeah. Non-lethal. Uh, just it. drop. Wait, what was in the other hand? Uh, nothing. I just, I thought there were two guns at first when I started to do the oh. movement, and then I realized there was only one. Because gotcha. <laughs> it would have been cool, like, a, yeah, but I was like, no, there's only one laser pistol that she's got. <laughs> uh, that'll be 22 to hit. Oh, absolutely hit. Amazing. Oh, wow. <laughs> Badass space captain. Rootin' tootin' sharp shootin' space captain. <laughs> that is gonna be and eight eight points of damage uh, i genuinely thought porgy was gonna die today <laughs> not today but not it's today. like someone wrote this scene and for, for for a movie like yeah the dice are telling a story <laughs> they really are like it's all if i was watching this i'd be like Oh, fucking stakes, man. Then what's the point if they're going to be saved by... Like, no! <laughs> the Wild Surge waited until it was the right moment. <laughs> and, by it the way, went to the, and it went to the right Wild Surge. And it, yeah, something that and was actually Raven really helpful rolled, for the situation. Raven all rolled a nat 20. What? And then Susie rolls a 22. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> now here's what I will say. You... No. <laughs> no, no, no. Sorry, this was for Susie for the next shot. Uh <laughs> You can't see an ollie, uh, but you hear a cry as you shoot, and you know you've hit. I will, in essence, uh, make this as though it's a disarming shot. Um, here's what I will. Uh, here's what I will offer to you. This is a, going to be made at advantage because you don't have the feature of disarming uh, a person, uh, but. If you hit her again with your next shot, there will be a minus five for the roll. Sorry. A minus five to my roll? No. To her, to her saving, saving throw. All right. And she'll save at advantage because I... Gotcha. Yeah. I was like, are you saying that I get advantage? But <laughs> take five away? I apologize if I was not clear. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Not at all. That's gonna be 24. Yes, that hits. Okay. Uh, Jeez. And that is the, the one on the damage deck, but uh, six. Six. Non-lethal damage. Six non-lethal damage. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, what is your save DC for anything? My save DC it is uh, thirteen. Thirteen. Uh, even at disadvantage. No, wait. Just under with the minus five because you hit. Oh man, that is a twelve. Um, you you shoot twice in the same region. You hear the clatter of something hit the ground. Uh, it's confusion uh, all around you. Anali is still not gone down. There are still commoners, although the area started to get heavily obscured. Uh, Susie and Ravenall, you're like just above the fog, and it's like just just outside the fog, but it's near to you. Uh, anything else for Susie's turn? Yeah, I'd next? like to action search. Oh, absolutely, friggin' lutely. <laughs> Alrighty. Um. Fire. Natural 20. Oh. <laughs> uh, Holy for, for a 30 to hit. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and do the crit thing with Jeez. your damage. Alrighty. So that'll be 6 plus 1d6 plus 5. So 11 you plus, plus the 11. d6. Yeah. Come on, Holy baby. Holy hell. Uh, 15 damage. Okay. Jesus. Can I shoot her again? Holy moly. What the heck? 26? Yep. <laughs> and... Nine. Um, yes, that you are, yeah, you, you got her, you know where she is, and every sound she makes in pain when you shoot her from the last one gives you exactly where you need to shoot for the next. Yeah. Uh, just beautiful. Do you want to describe any flair that you give this, or? Yeah, I think I'm kind of <laughs> hanging off the statue a bit, and just straight arm. <laughs> I stop and go, if any of the rest of y'all don't want to get hurt, you best start running, because you might get caught in the crossfire. Can I get intimidation with advantage, please? Thank you. <laughs> Natural 20. Incredible. Uh, <laughs> the commoners oh uh, turn and run. Yeah. Uh, 22. Wild guard people start moving in to the uh, square. Just, yeah. Uh, this has been... The, the mob has dispersed for the day. The current situation with Anali is all but handled. Yeah. Incredible. Uh, pure Gorg, that is you. That is you. I'm going to run. Poggy's going to yeah. run for his fucking life. Yeah. <laughs> he's going to run back the way they came and he's going to run out of the fucking city. <laughs> uh, run, go to boy. <laughs> uh, can I just have a quick survival check? <laughs> <Go on>. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you get? I rolled a two, so it's a five. <laughs> You run in what you are certain is the direction of, of where you were, and you run straight into the statue of oh, no. Deuteron oh, That's way, way better than what I feared was going to happen, was that you were going to run and wind up outside the city, and things were going to kill you immediately. <laughs> oh, we know where you are. I you hear the sound of, of in like, hook, hook beats, and then a... <laughs> Porky. And and you guys are all enveloped <laughs> in this fog cloud, and it's and it's very picturesque as uh, sort of Ravenall and uh, Susie are holding onto the statue. Susie, you've got your your sort of like your leaning shots. You call over your shoulder, and then fog like billows over you and and obscures you from sight. Um, 
anything else Bjork, Bjork. Uh, you've got more movement than that you you could you could change direction if you like but that was just if i know i run into the statue can i at least you make can, another survival you, with advantage you, you you can orient yourself from there and and get a good direction for you do you want to head towards the exit of the city or do you want to head like where are you trying to go I want to run for the exit. Amazing, you head east. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Uh, I'm just like fuck, 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 <laughs> fudge, 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 fudge. <laughs> uh, incredible. Um, you fully head for the exit. Uh, Ravenall, anything you'd like to do as this fog cloud moves away from you? Uh, and reveals Anali standing, one arm bleeding down uh, onto the ground, uh, gun by her feet. I want to take the gun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, great, I'm going to have a contested sleight of hand check against you. If uh... <laughs> I'm not sure. saying she's good at this. <laughs> This comes but, out of the fog, like from the statue, just to walk up to her and just attempt to take her gun. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a pretty good roll over here. You've got, you've got to be an eighteen. Six. Plus <laughs> <laughs> eight to sleight of hand. <laughs> she uh. In the time it takes her to reach down to pick up her gun with her other hand, you move from the statue all the way over there and uh, grab the laser pistol. I'm just going to follow the fog cloud. <laughs> I just fly. I'm glad you know where I'm going. <laughs> there's, there's a 20 foot radius sphere of fog surrounding you, so we'll just follow that. <laughs> <laughs> um it's not my fantastic. turn yet fantastic uh anali if you if you are gone with the laser pistol anali can sit looks furious uh after you looks up at Susie, sees that sort of wild guard folk are incoming and runs off in the opposite direction runs north Uh, and with that, unless you guys have any actions in this moment to take, we are going to uh, leave initiative. Well done. Uh, you, that was that was one of the most that was one of, that was one of, the, one of the most deadly encounters I've ever prepared. <laughs> I am not I'm not kidding. Uh, what the worst case scenario would have been there, for your understanding, is 50 commoners would all have gotten attacks with firearms on the three of you. Um, and uh, Anali <laughs> would have also gotten attacks uh, with laser pistols. Uh, there was potential for more damage to have been done in that than in almost any other encounter I've created. You gotta laugh, otherwise you'll cry. Well, the shambling mound was bad. <laughs> <laughs> An angry the mob farms makes to little the versions of itself. I hope we don't have another encounter where there's one main person who's stronger and a bunch of little people that they're sending after us. <laughs> now the commoners' HPs were all four. But we don't want to kill a bunch of commoners. They're just. Angry and stupid. <laughs> and oh my breathing. god. Porky is never going to use detect thoughts ever again. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized it doesn't matter now, but I had my plus 10 bonus. So that would have been uh, like a 36. A 36? God, that's. Is there anything else you want to take off of this woman's body as you go? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> like, do you want to just try to rob her blind? Oh, oh yeah, let's do that. Do you have like a, a limb of her husband? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were using a new arm. 
Um, I'll take the gun and the hand that's holding it. <laughs> just steal her forearm. Just <laughs> um, oh my god. Thirty six is insane. You you pick up everything in every pocket that she has as you go past, um, with a swiftness that feels supernatural in nature. Um, <laughs> Supernatural in nature. Feel supernatural. Um, <laughs> Susie, do you follow the fog cloud? Uh, I, I kind of look to the wild guard and see if they... Like, is there someone more senior here? Uh, no, there doesn't seem to be... Uh, like... Uh, it see The people closest to you are just, just uh, sort of officers. I, uh, I'll just pick one of them at random. Hey, you, what's your name? Uh, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <Hey>. Steve. <laughs> Steve? Yeah. What's your rank? Uh, lowest one. Alrighty, Steve. <laughs> I see they started recruiting straight out of high school. Hey. Uh, it's been pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> guy's like 16. Oh, Stevie. Oh, Stevie, you shouldn't be involved in a part of any I went of to Aaron's dot uni, but they needed people to save children. So I was like, yeah. Oh, honey. Well, I, I stood up for the wild guard, but it doesn't mean I agree with everything they do. Uh, I just think these people will die faster without the wild guard to protect them. That's the kind of, yeah. Um... Honey, will you, uh, tell, uh, Spruce the, uh, everything that went down here? All the details, all right? I will do that. All righty. And make sure you include the part about how they wanted to, uh, reassemble here in 24 hours if we didn't fix literally all of their problems, which we literally did not say we were going to do. I, I will convey those exact words to the cat in general, yeah. Thank you, honey. And uh, tell her to text me if if she needs to. And that we're gonna head out. Okay. Uh, Susie, text her. Yeah, I could do that. I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know fully what. <laughs> I keep texting, telling other people to... <laughs> I give them my digits because I don't know how to... <laughs> the numbers are different, too. It's different characters. Whole okay, now that's language. understandable. <laughs> As someone whose primary language is Cagrian and then move and then try and then learn common. It's, it, that's fair. I'm imagining it's like a completely different alphabet. Cagrian. Yeah. It's just different forms of goats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's just goats of goats. Making just regular like letters in common <laughs> with their bodies can we have legit on the on the on the hidden realms twitter can we do goats letters a thread <laughs> yeah absolutely we can thank you daisy <laughs> <laughs> sorry um, I, I didn't mean to speak on your behalf daisy that was just sounds like a wonderful yeah. idea <laughs> okay um I want no, to have a fun day on Google. Anyway, good. Um, yeah, I wanted it to go up the line officially. Um, yeah, so I got shit to do. Uh, I report to Sadea, who reports to the Captain General. But if you want me to, you're cool, and I'll just go and talk to Spruce. Why don't you do what you think is best, Stevie? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ask a sixteen-year-old teenager to do what they think is best. Cool. Thanks. No, you know what? I'm gone. <laughs> All right. I look to the the next nearest one, and I say, "Can you just make sure he does that?" <laughs> Cheers, kiddo. Um, and I go the fog clap. I can't. It's it's it's. I can't. It's so big. <laughs> <laughs> I would have to be, it. and I heard, I heard it. I would. I know, like I can find it. Yes, <laughs> yes, you can. There's no problem. 
It's yeah, it's forty feet wide and twenty feet tall. You yeah. can find it. Um, as I go, I'm <laughs> yelling out to Pyogyorg. Pyogyorg, don't don't exit the city. Remember the Shambler. Uh, please, Pyogyorg, you run towards the east. Um, gate. Josh, um, I want to do a kind of check to maybe we could do an either I heard that. Um, check. Yeah. Is it whether I heard that or it's I'm in such a state of panic, I'm I'm not listening and I'm just running. Fantastic. Uh, we are. Let's make that a roll. What would you like this to be? A perception check. Why don't we make this a wisdom saving throw? Yeah, let's do that. Alrighty. And I will set the DC for you now. Okay. Oh, that rolled out. Um. Okay, it's a twenty-one, folks. We're good. <laughs> of a DC sixteen, which is pretty. Yeah, uh, DC twenty-one. You hear that and stop and realize you're running blind, for starters, and also you remember hitting into the statue and remember that the east gate is definitely closed, and you would have run into a wall. <laughs> Ravenall mm. you pick through what you got from Anali's pockets uh, you have a coin purse with 15 platinum pieces in it oh my god you uh, obviously got the laser pistol and a recharge fuel cell uh, as well from another one of our pockets. And in uh, the last, you have a letter correspondence with the Packby Corporation. And that is where we're going to call tonight's session. Oh, Thank geez. you all so much for watching! Uh, tune in next time as the adventures of Wild Folks Folly and Beyond continue from here. Bye-bye, folks! Bye, everybody! <laughs>